you can be real, where you can be vulner vulnerable and be safe. Now I realize some of you are just meeting us for the first time. You may not want to really open your heart up, you know, meeting us the first time. But you're going you're gonna to see it happening in this environment. And I'm just pointing that out mostly because we have so many here that are new. And I want you to know that, you know, to me, a healthy environment is, first of all, you can't have it if you're not safe. And if you can't be honest and real, then you can't have a healthy environment, right? So there's some cool things that just kind of happen. And we're going to do a variety of things on purpose throughout this weekend that are going to feed into this environment that I'm describing. But there are things that sometimes just happen as well because we believe in each other, because we trust each other, because we speak into each other's lives and we genuinely care. I, you know, some of you I'm just meeting for the first time tonight. Some of you I have a long history with. You know, and, the, and there's people in this room that I know that if I needed anything, they would be there in a heartbeat. David would jump on a plane and be here if I needed him. You know? And that's cool. And there's a lot of you that would do that. That's powerful stuff. And, you know, we're here this weekend to talk about leading short-term mission teams. And we're going to talk about that. But really what this weekend is more about is about us and the relationships. And the, the strength and the power that comes out of that that then lets us be good short-term mission team leaders. But the relationship is critical and is key. So I, I thought, you know, as I was thinking about, you know, just the, the environment that we, that we work to create and have amongst each other and that trust that we choose to build and so forth, this one might seem a, a little obvious to you, but um, I don't know. It, it's just really a cool example to me of, of what I'm talking about here. And this happened at an IMLT. We do two a year, so this one was two or three back. So, you know, sometime in the last year and a half or so. Um, one, one of our people handed these cards out at the end of IMLT. And, and I was like, well, you know, what is this? I, this was not something we planned on doing. They just decided to do it. Well, it happened to be my wife. <laughs> so that's why I say this might be a little obvious. But I received this one, but so did everyone else. She handed us these cards with our name on it. You remember it? And, and throughout the course of the, the weekend, she wrote words on these cards. This card sits, I don't know if you even know this, but this card sits in a spot in my office where I see it every day. And on here she said, I'm trusted, I'm trustworthy, and I'm able. <laughs> and guys, I'm sorry, you know, it kind of chokes me up a little bit because these are the kinds of things that should happen in our midst. You know, we should do things that reach out and touch each other's hearts in a way that it's meaningful and it's lasting and it's deep and it's powerful, right? So when I look down and I read a word like, I'm trusted, I mean, that's powerful, right? When it comes from a relationship that you trust, that you feel safe, that you know they have your back, that they're going to be real and honest, that's cool stuff. And there's evidence of it like this that shows up. And that's what we're after. I mean, that's what we're working towards. That's what we want in our midst. We'll do some things this weekend that will be specifically geared at, you know, fostering and maintaining and building this atmosphere that I'm describing. We'll also then encourage you, take these things, use them with your teams. You know, I mean, we're, we're specifically talking this weekend about how to lead short-term mission teams because we want to lead them well. You know, we have people, we actually had somebody, and, and this is not like an uncommon thing, and they're not in this room, so don't worry about it. would have been funny if they had been. I probably still would have used this example. But they ask us, can I just come to this weekend, and then I can just go lead mission teams? And we're like... Oh, honey, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not how this works. You can't come to a day and a half or whatever it is of training and, and do this at the level of quality and in just a great way like we want to do it. This takes commitment. This takes time. You know, I had a fun moment this year. Um, 
and I, I thought I was going to hit 50, but I didn't. I led my 49th mission team this year. So I'll get my 50th in, 50th uh, mission team in next year. That's a cool landmark, but it also made me go, wow. You know, it takes a while to learn how to do this, to do it well. And it's, you know, there's just so much involved. And I see heads nodding because you guys get it. Some of you that are newer, maybe that, you're like, why, why does it take so much? It takes a lot because we want to do it well, right? So with that, I want to thank you for being here. Whether you're here in the capacity of just checking things out, or you're here in the capacity of you've already, you're already certified, you're actively leading teams, or you're somewhere in that process, I'm really glad you're here. I'm really glad that we get to spend the time together to interact with each other and to learn how to iron sharpen iron, you know, learn how to do this well. It's so much fun to be involved in your lives. You know, I've watched this year as, you know, David, you're a great example. You've been able to step out. How many teams did you lead this year? Five. Five. That's a huge step up. <laughs> That's a cool moment in his life because he's doing something that, that his heart yearns for, he has a passion for. And there's others in this room that I can point out, you know, great things that are happening in your lives. Vicki, you've been happier <laughs> this year than I've seen you ever, probably. You know, maybe when we were kids, but I don't remember, you know, a lot of that. That's too far, too long ago. But it was fun. You what? Because I had a lemur on my head. You had a lemur on your head. She got a lemur on her head this year. Mission trips do afford some really cool, fun things, too, right? A lemur on your head. That doesn't happen in Colorado. <laughs> cool stuff happens in Colorado, but not lemur. Yeah. My point is, it's fun to be involved in your lives. So if you're one of the newer relationships, you're newer to emotion and newer in our lives, welcome. We're glad to have you. We're, we're glad to get to know you. And we're excited to see what God has for all of us. You know, one of the things that I really um, push here at In Motion, really that we all push, is we're not building a ministry. You know, and for a lot of people, they're like, well, what are you talking about? You know, I mean, we should have strategy and, you know, you're building and growing this ministry. No, no, we're not. We're just trying to play our part in the kingdom. We're just trying to be a group of people that have a common heart and a passion and a drive, common interests, and together we can help each other do amazing things. So it's not about building an organization. It's about us doing something together that's significant, that's important. Now, we need the organization around us. For, for sometimes obvious reasons, and sometimes we wonder, <laughs> why do we put up with things that are required in running an organization? But we need that structure. We need those things to help us. But that organization's there to serve us, not us to serve it. <clears throat> to me, that's a huge difference. You know, there's an awful lot of ministries out there that it's really not about the people. It's about building the organization, okay? And I'm not here to slam them as much as just to say, that's not what we're doing. It's about you and your dreams, and your visions. It's about what we're doing together to accomplish some amazing things that impact lives around the world. So first and foremost, we are children of a loving God. A God who thinks we're amazing. We're children of a God who has our backs, and He absolutely wants the best for us each and every day. That is first and foremost. He thinks so much of you and I that he was willing to give his son the job of coming to this earth and, and doing what needed to be done to get to the point to where he could say, it is finished. God invested in you in a huge way by sending his son. You all know that. But guys, that's got to be first and foremost. Is you knowing who you are because of what Jesus completed on the cross. Amen. Your identity in him. That is first, that is the most critical thing, most critical part of, of your leadership of short-term mission teams, and really the most critical part of your life in general. Right? To know who you are. You know, 2 Corinthians 5:17, you've you've read it before. Powerful. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. 
and behold, all things have been made new. All things have been made new. That's who you are. Guys, this is what's important. Who you are because of what Jesus did. And you walking in that. And you being all that you can be because of that. Not because of your own strength, your own ability. But because of Him. You know, it's, it's interesting because what we read there, us becoming a new creation, all things becoming new, that's a daily event. That's a moment-by-moment -moment event. So when Clay sinned earlier today, I, you're there. I know, sorry. Sorry about that. You know, call, calling him out. The new guy. Right? Calling him out. When he sinned earlier today, doesn't matter now. Now, I'm not saying sin doesn't have consequences and so forth. Don't get weird on me here. But I'm telling you, it's a new creation. Moment by moment by moment every day. That's ridiculous, guys. I mean, if you stop and think about it, what Jesus did for us is totally unreasonable. We didn't deserve it. It's ridiculous. New creation each and every day. Sometimes I think we relegate it to a one-time event. I became a new creation the day I accepted Christ as a Savior. No. You become a new creation moment by moment of every day. Powerful, powerful stuff. And this has got to be first and foremost. I'm going to get to some practical stuff. Some of you really like practical stuff, and we're going to get to some of that tonight. We'll get to a lot of it tomorrow. But this has got to be the foundation. And I know most of you probably know this stuff, but I think we've got to be reminded. I think connection with our identity in Christ is something that we need a consistent and regular diet of. Because the moment we forget, and the moment we make it about us, I make it about me, things start going south. I've got to keep it out there and keep it about Jesus. It's not about me. Sorry, Cindy, it's not about you. <laughs> we do, we like it to be about us a lot of times in life, you know? I mean, I was telling um, Vicky something the other day. We're making some changes here at InMotion, and, and I found myself thinking, I mean, it's causing my daily routine to look a little different. And I told her, I said, yeah, but I my routine changes and so I'm doing things a little bit different and I, I think things like, well, but what are they thinking back in the office? And Vicki said, we're not thinking about you, we're thinking about ourselves. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's true, right? We're very self-focused most of the time. The reality is if we can shift that, it needs to be about Jesus. I want you to do something for me. I want everybody just to close your eyes. And I want you... Just for a moment here, I want you to, to do everything that you can with your eyes closed to think about Jesus right now. And I want you to think about what it would look like for you to be a new creation. With all things made new. With all things made new. With all things made new. Nothing left unturned. All things made new. You know, you may not feel like it at times, but it's true. You are a new creation. And all things have been made new. You can look up here. Take time and think about that for you. You know, I think in general, gosh, I know this is a strong statement, but I'm going to make it anyway. I think in general, people tend to hate God because they see him as angry, as mad, as out to get them, looking for their faults. You know, if... Come on, I, I don't know, you're, you're just letting me, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, if... I'm here all weekend. I should have said that. Uh, you know, if somebody mess, messes up, makes a mistake, call it a sin, call it whatever you want. He can do one of two things at that point. He can... You know, go hide in the corner and be embarrassed and ashamed and 
and and not want to have anything to do with God because he's afraid God's mad at him now. And hi, Kathy. Hi. <laughs> and he can be miserable, or he can he can go. You know what, God? I just screwed up. But you know what? I know you love me, and I know you're not angry with me, and I know that Jesus is more than enough, and that He's bigger. And so that thing that I don't like either that I did, I can. I'm just gonna turn my back on that, and I'm gonna to turn to you. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are more than enough. I thank you now that you've already forgiven. I don't even need to ask you because Jesus has already done that. You've already forgiven me. Now help me walk forward. Help me walk away from that. And as you're doing that, you're walking away from it. And you can do that in seconds instead of, you know, years sometimes of being stuck in patterns. Because you think God's angry. Because you think God's mad. And because he's out to get you. And we don't deserve it. There's all these kinds of things. And the world, and even a lot of Christians, they have these mentalities. So you, as a short-term mission team leader, you get to work with some of those people. You get to have them on your teams. You get to go to nations where those people are living, and you get to be there for a week or two, and you get to encourage them that, you know what, God, God's not angry. God's not mad. God loves you. God wants the best for you. He wants to bring life to you. And he wants to bring wholeness and health, and he want, he's, he's out to get you in a good way. He wants you, but he wants you in a healthy way. Right? It's good stuff, guys. So our mandate's real simple. You know, as we start this weekend and as we talk about short-term mission team leadership, our mandate isn't to lead short-term mission teams. Nowhere in the Bible have I found it yet. I've looked for it. But it says, go ye and lead short-term mission teams. And it doesn't say that. What it does say is bring people to Christ. Bring people to the foot of the cross, to a God that loves them. Bring them to a place where they can embrace health and security and wholeness and all the things I can go on and on that are things that God brought us, right, through Jesus. So that's our mandate. It's really very simple. We are not a short-term missions organization. In Motion Ministries is not a short-term missions organization. That's primarily what we do. Why do we do? Let me just ask this, and somebody's bold enough to answer it. Why do we do short-term mission trips? I'll take a shot. Yeah. I'm thinking to make a, help people make a connection with God. Okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Even obvious, talking right? to Vicky, I'm so impressed. It's awesome. Short-term mission trips are an amazing tool to help people connect to the heart of a father that loves them. To help people connect to God in a healthy and wholesome way. It puts them in an environment. It, it's like it's a pressure cooker in a good way. It creates an environment where they're away from daily routines and pressures and stresses and so forth. And they're put out there in an environment they're not used to. And their hearts are open to connecting with their father in a way they weren't in their just day-to-day -day routine. It's an amazing tool. We do short-term mission trips because they're a great tool to fulfill our mandate of bringing people to Christ. Okay? To give people that opportunity to connect with God in a different way. That's what you're doing as a team leader. And as long as it works, as long as it's a good tool, we'll keep doing it. But you know what? It's not the only tool. Um, I've had a lot of fun just in the last week or so as I've been preparing for this, just thinking about some of the things that are happening, you know, in our midst. And there's some of us in this in motion circle that are talking about writing books. Well, that's a good way maybe to connect people to the heart of the Father as well. So see, don't, don't let yourself, as much as you know, none of us should let ourselves get stuck in thinking, well, you know, my role at in motion is this. Well, yeah, maybe for the moment, but if there's something else that comes along that you can use, a talent you have, something that you can use to connect people to God, then we should do that thing. Okay, this isn't just about short-term mission trips. We're having so much fun with, um, Luke and I have a hard time with it, but there's this conference, it's called You Are Worthy, right? Are you worthy? Are you worthy? <laughs> we can't ever remember which way it is. Are you worthy or you are worthy? Yes, you are worthy. These You Are Worthy conferences, they're bringing life to people. Well, that's out of the box for us, as far as it's something we've just done in the last year and 
the year, right? But it brings life to people. You're here partly because of that, right? That conference? I mean, that's a piece of it. Yeah. Cool stuff, right? So if it's something that connects people to the Father, then we're all about it. I know, you know, for some of you, maybe it's not as shocking as I tend to think it might be, but for you to hear me say, we're not a short-term missions organization. We're simply an organization that's working to connect people to God in amazing ways, and short-term mission trips are an amazing way to do that, so we use that tool. And it is a powerful, powerful tool. But I want, I, I'm kind of harping on this because I, I want you to hear what I'm saying here. You know, because we've really made a concentrated effort to focus in. Not, not that we lost focus, we didn't. But what I want all of us to do as we call ourselves a part of In Motion Ministries is to focus in on what's important. It's not important that we do short-term missions. It's important that we connect people to God. That we give people the opportunity to grow. That they feel this atmosphere, this environment. Create, that, that I described earlier for here, create that with your teams. Maybe for the first time you'll have a team member that feels safe. Vicki, you had a team this year, a team of Lutheran teenagers. Some of those kids from stories you told me, because of the environment you created, those kids felt safety in a way that allowed them to connect to God that they had never felt in their lives. That's powerful. That's what this is about. Okay? And we get good stuff done on the field. We get good work projects done and all that. But all that's fluff compared to what you provide for that individual life that then connects with God in a powerful way. That's what this is about. And that's part of that focusing in that I think is very important for us. So we can talk about... You know, we're, we're making concerted efforts to get Sandra out there speaking more often. You're going to find out tomorrow she's an amazing speaking gift, and we want her out there more. We've got people wanting to write books. We're doing these You Are Worthy conferences, and predominantly we're doing short-term mission trips. But all of that is towards the same goal, that same focal point. So I want to take just a moment. We have what we call an emotional impact statement. I want to read this to you because this is the focus. This is what, what we're honing in on. And I realize that, you know, as I read this to you tonight, um, we're, we're going we're gonna to change this up a little bit, and, and you're going to see why. But let me, let me address this first. Why an emotional impact statement? When a person is emotionally impacted, lasting change occurs in their life, and rarely does significant change occur without an emotional impact. This can be negative or positive. Probably you've all experienced it. Times when there is powerful emotion, negative or positive, it brought change in your life. It's IMM's desire that each person connecting with IMM have a position, a, a positive, sorry, a positive experience that prompts godly change in their life. Thus, the IMM emotional impact statement. I just realized why I was having a hard time reading this. If you can't see it, it's hard to read it. So here's the statement. It's IMM's desire that everyone associated with IMM experience the intense emotion of connecting with God. Whether this be a short-term missionary, a team leader, a country host, the local pastor, a person we meet along our journey, or I'm going to add to this, in a book that we write or a conference that we lead, people deserve to be led from a position of love and an ever-deepening realization of their value dignity and worth because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. We want them to leave their con contact or connection with IMM having experienced God's amazing love for them. That's the focus point. Focus in on that and you're meeting the goal. So whatever the activity is, doesn't matter. In the end, you leave people feeling dignity and value and worth. And they've connected in a new and a powerful way with the love of our Father, with the love of God that maybe they've never touched before, or they've touched it in a new way. To me, that's the focal point, and that's powerful stuff. In Zechariah 4.6, it says, It's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You know, we really can't work hard enough to make IMM a success. If you want to look at it purely from a business model, you know, we could all work as hard as we possibly could, and there would always be more to do. 
There would always be another step that could be taken. There would always be, you know, one stone left unturned. There would always be something more to do, right? Yeah. So in the